Hey everybody, welcome back to the second game of the day. We're okay, playing as the white pieces today. We're going to play the usual opening. This should be expected at this point. In this position, the one issue that I've run into is if I go light square bishop d3 and he chooses not to trade, but instead just place uh, the knight over here on e4, um, it makes this, the position a little bit complicated in my opinion, but I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, maybe he'll just accept the trade. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, what's the play here? I can either try to block in again. I think we had a really similar position last game. And the engine did recommend to block in with the light square bishop, but then he can always just fall back to f5 here. I kind of like the idea of just playing a developing move. I wonder which developing move is better actually. F3 or E2. I think F3 is actually better because I can always play knight D2 afterwards. Can he really add more pressure to F3 at this point? No. Yeah, that's the only way he can add pressure. So I think I'm just going to try F3. I tried E2 last game. The idea was very similar. Knight on f6, bishop on g5. Um, yeah, so this kind of pins... Well, the knight is pinned, and I can't really come over here like I'd like to. So I think I'd rather just add another defender to f3, and then I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to trade off here, but I can always just take... Kind of expecting g5 next, so this is kind of a nice double whammy. He's blocked in his light square bishop here, which is nice. Um, so at this point, I'm kind of tempted. I'm actually really tempted to to play g5 here. I'm pretty sure his bishop just gets locked in. Yeah, I'm really tempted because g5, even if he takes, I can come back. I guess I'm losing a pawn that way. I'm losing a... Well, no, let's think about that. So g5... G5 fall back take. G5 knight takes on takes. He runs back and then I can still take. But let's see, G5 knight takes pawn takes. Bishop takes. So he does have a way to sort of recapture that. So maybe I don't love G5. Maybe I just like the idea of unpinning the knight first. Hmm. Ideas here, ideas. Queen c3. B3, queen B3 is also an idea. Hmm. Lots of options here. I'm not really sure which one's the best. Yeah, lot, lots of good moves here. Lots of good moves, I feel. Think about this. Knight e5, he can take with the knight. And I can take with the bishop. 
Yeah, see now my bishop can't really get out here. I feel like c4 is the play here. But I kind of want to just try kicking this knight as well. Hmm. I feel like if I was the engine, <laughs> I would want to play c4. <laughs> I've noticed it just, it loves to recommend c4 in this position. Just going to bring a knight here. I always go back and forth between the pawn and the bishop recapture here. I think the bishop recapture is the way to go. At the very least, this forces his bishop back. Excuse me, forces his knight back. Yeah, the bishop's going to be useless behind this pawn on e5, right? I think in this position, there is some trick trap uh, you can do. In the London, I think he's just going to try to kick the uh the bishop on e5 with f6 interesting mm -hmm. so i kind of want to defend this knight with the with the queen at this point so i almost want to just go f6 Actually, I should castle, so he can't really go after. I'm going to castle so he can't harass the g2 square. I would have loved to have traded this light square bishop off. He's really set on keeping it around. I think that just protects c4, but I kind of want to offer this trade now. I think he's basically forced to take it here. Wow, so he thought the knight was more valuable there. That's really surprising. Okay. What an interesting game so far. He's got two weak pawns here. This is going to be a little bit tough. <laughs> it's funny, we have like opposite sort of ideas here. He's got his dark square bishop and all my pawns are on dark squares at the moment. And I have a light square bishop and his pawns are on light squares. So something's going to have to get broken up. Um, I think I'm just going to start centralizing the rooks here. He hasn't castled, so I should consider breaking the center open somehow.
Is attacking B2? Don't really want to. Maybe, maybe I just give that up in favor of my own push here. I need to be mindful of him attacking this bishop and this pawn at the same time. Can he actually do that? I don't think he can, right? No, I don't think he can. My pieces are a bit disconnected at the moment, so I need to think about that. I don't really want to give up a pawn here. Push? I don't really want to push. Do I want to push? Not really. Yeah, like, none of my pieces are really working with each other uh, right now. If I go G3, he's almost... Wow. You want to aim at the pawn. I think if I go g3, he's almost guaranteed to castle. Which maybe isn't too bad. I don't understand why he would do this, though. Hmm. Well, for the time being, I have two defenders on e3. Kind of want to go g3 and just see what he does. Um, I also want to see if I can abuse this diagonal somehow. Hmm. Just going to keep an extra defender on e3 in case he decides to go for some sack. Kind of be weird, but you never know. Brings it back. I get why he doesn't want to castle. Maybe I just have to break open at this point. Takes, check, takes, check. Sacking a bishop. Sacking a bishop is definitely an idea. Not an idea that I particularly love, but it is an idea. What to do? I don't really want to push F4. Hmm. Breaking open here seems useless. 
it has to be done though. This bishop's not really doing a whole lot at this point. We have to break open the center somehow. I feel like this diagonal is like where it needs to get abused. Man, I'm just like not seeing the moves here. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I don't know. My only idea is to push a pawn or something. Start trading pawns off or something? I don't know. Just really not seeing anything here. Yeah, I don't know what to do in these types of situations where the moves are not super obvious. I think my only idea is to just break open the center. I don't like this diagonal because his pawns are guarding. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of just want to move the king over to... Still hasn't castled. His queen's not in the best spot. My bishop's not on a very good spot on d3 here. Yeah, I want to get my bishop somewhere better, at least where it's defended. You know, he's... No, this is a pawn. I think I have to go for the break here. I don't know. I'm just going to try something. I don't think there's like any really good moves here, so... I probably just have to play moves. No, E-pawns are just really bad. I'm kind of surprised he went for that. Getting the Rook out. Getting the rook out is an idea. Actually, kind of like lifting the rook. Seeing if we can maybe abuse something over here. I'm going to block in the light square bishop, but I don't think that's the end of the world. This pawn protected. I don't know. Let's make the game interesting, I guess. He's playing very fast. He's really only used like a minute of his time. What does that do? Goes for the bishop. It's defended. I don't want to go attack this square. I can attack his king. His king, his queen.
and loses a pawn. I don't want to remove the defense from this pawn. Could stack his bishop here, and I think he might be Oof. quite the move there, sir. Going after the pawn. I think he's going to come in this way. It's kind of what I'm expecting. I'm really tempted to just trade queens off here. I'm fully expecting this move here. Well, for the time being, he's... Yeah, I think I can protect c5 with b4. And I kind of just blocked his queen from escaping this way as well. He goes after the rook. I think his queen might get trapped soon. I might need to play like queen f3 just to protect. Where can he really go? I'm kind of tempted to just trade off on like e3 if he plays something like d2. And if I had a check, I could maybe offer a trade here, but I don't. I'm going to try to block him in here. Oh, he escapes that way. I see. Okay, well, that was a lot of work. Pinned here. A strange game. <laughs> How much can a queen dance? I almost guarantee he's going to go here. <laughs> Just judging by how he's been playing. Close enough. He's going after this pawn. Uh, I just lose a bishop. 
Uh, I think I just lost a bishop. Oh, yeah, I think I kind of misplayed this. He's got two attackers here. I only have one defender. I think he kind of messed that up, uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, I think I have to do this. Man, I just want to get this queen trade over. Man, if only I had a check. That was the main reason why I wanted to get this bishop out of the way, was just so the queens could eye each other. I was, honestly, I thought he was going to take, but I was just going to um, recapture. No. Should be a pretty straightforward game from here. As long as I don't hang my queen, I'll be okay. Hmm. He has to go rook f8. Yeah. Now I can start scooping up the pawns. It's pretty resignable for him, if I'm just being completely honest. Now at some point, I probably just want to offer the rook trade. Even the queen trade for that matter. Or like giving up the queen for the rook. Yeah. Just gonna go for this square. I could kind of cut him off. And I think it's just mate after bishop e2. Nah, uh, just kidding. Almost. Well, whatever. I'm going to promote pretty quick here, so... He really doesn't have a way to stop this, so... Um, I'm going to do this slightly backwards. Uh, I could also just go for the check and get the mate here. Uh, actually, I'll just do that. I'll just do that. Yeah, it is just mate here. No, he could block in, but yeah.
It's going to be very difficult for him. For him, I basically have kind of maiden two here. Yeah. Boom, mate. Yeah, it, it was very resignable after he lost his queen, but um, yeah, GG though. Slongononi, Slongononi. I think I'm saying that right. Look at that, eight eight eight. Oh, come back. That's exciting though. GG though. Oh, eight, almost 84%. I'm actually really surprised by that. Oh, he played one really bad blunder here. Oh, or I played a really bad blunder here. What did I do here? I, I messed something up. All ah, right, he could have won the bishop here. Yeah, I made a really big mistake here. He had two attackers here. He should have went um, rook d3 here, as far as I know. Yeah, now this threatens the queen. Yeah, he had a really big chance here. I, I messed up pretty hard. I, I was too focused on the pawn and not the bishop here. And he had two attackers. I only had one defender, so he could have initiated that trade. Uh, exchange with the rook there. And he would have threatened my queen. And it would have been um, pretty hard to come back from that. I think my best bet, honestly, would have been just offering, you know, some kind of trade like that or something like that. But uh, yeah, really, this game really just came down to one move. And then he just gave up a queen basically for free. So I'd been I'd been waiting to play this bishop f1 or bishop e2. Probably bishop f1 was better because it was defended by the king uh, for quite a while. But I think this would have lost the pawn even if we didn't trade off. Um, yeah, there was any number of ways to do that. But uh, yeah, let's look at the game otherwise from the top. So d4, d5, f5, queen e5, I need to get into the habit of pushing c4 here. I do worry I do worry about uh this but um yeah a, f a a lot of you have actually suggested that move there so and then what does he do he can I don't know take a pawn or something what's his next best move after that e5 oops Hey, even then, it's pretty lost. Is that that bad? Is that really that bad? Oh, oh, e5. <laughs> right, 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 right. And then you could just take a pawn or something. Yeah, I need to get into the habit of c4 when I see this knight c6, bishop f5 stuff uh, when playing the London system. Something I just need to keep in mind. He really didn't want the exchange here. I'm glad that knight f3 was the best move here. I was really going back back and forth between knight f3 and knight e2. What does the engine say? But it says it's a good, but this is best. So I like best. Best is good. Getting the queen out, c3. Mm. Sure. Oh man, g5. What's what's the G5 continuation? I, I went... I debated a lot about G5. Here's how I saw it playing out if I, if I went here. I don't know, but then... Yeah, and then he wins the pawn. But even then, I guess my position is just so much better here. Okay, I'll have to keep this in mind. Actually, let me see that line because I'm really curious. What comes after this? Queen b3? It's kind of weird. d7. Queen takes on b7. Rook b8. Queen takes c7. Oh. Oh, wow. 
Interesting line there. Yeah, th like this position is very, I don't know. It's very unsettling to me when I see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I usually don't try to go off on these sort of non-principled uh, like side quests. I just, I wanted to at least get a decent castle going. And so lines like continuations like this just make castling very awkward. So I think that's why I kind of don't like G5 actually, even if the engine does recommend it. What would have happened if I'd taken with the pawn on e5 here? This is okay. Yeah. See, what's what's bad about e5, I feel, is that the bishop is really just only controlling, you know, these squares here because these pawns kind of lock it in. So that's why I felt like going here, at least you have some control over, like, this diagonal here, you know? So... And plus the pawn structure stays the same too. So yeah, falling back here. Yeah. I should have fallen back, huh? It probably wasn't worth it losing the knight on this square. I was really expecting him to play f6 at some point. I was pretty happy with this exchange here. Yeah, pawn e5 was a bit, a bit of a bummer at this point. c4. I would say, like, this position here was just very confusing to me, like, right here. Because it seemed like there just wasn't anything to do. <laughs> I think those are the positions that I have the hardest time in, is when the board is super even, and it's not totally clear, like, how to advance your position. So, besides trading stuff off, I'm glad a3 and not rook a1 was the idea here. I'm glad e4 was decent though. I went back and forth between capturing with the rook and the bishop, but what is what does it say about the bishop? This was the best move. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really like e4 just because it wasn't controlling like any really valuable squares here. I mean, maybe there could have been, you know, I don't know. Let's just say he kept on going on his queen rage here. <laughs> I was kind of thinking something like this could possibly happen, but I. Uh, it seemed unlikely, I don't know. And then b4. Hmm. d4, rook d4. Queen a5. Yeah, the rook here. Yeah, I don't know, I was going back and forth. I was seeing the the rook could potentially have this open file but the bishop was in the way and it's like um the rook didn't really have a great square to go to because all these four squares were defended so so i wasn't too keen on getting the rook out to the d file like asap it just seemed like this was a matter of wearing the opponent out until until he gave up. So what could have been a move for me here? I was really curious about this move. I Yeah, obviously rook a1 was a mistake, but what could I have played? So b5. I think I just had to lose a pawn here, right? Oh, it comes with check. Oh, that's very clever. Queen to the oh. oh 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 that comes with check and then it can eyeball his queen. Nice line, man. Nice line. Definitely missed that. Hmm. Yeah, this position here was probably his best bet. Once he got the rook out to d8. 
Yeah, if only he would have captured here, he'd be fine. Now let me go back to where I made that. And so he wins a bishop here. And now he's just way ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Rook d7. This move just seemed too passive. I just didn't understand what it was doing. I got so lucky that I was able to play this. And then sure enough. Maybe he had this pre-moved. I'm not sure. Kind of seemed like it. Yeah, really from here it was just a matter of finding mate. It was pretty straightforward. Mate in six, mate in four, mate in three, mate in two, mate in one. Yeah, then the only move he had it was here. So, but yeah, GG Slongononi. Appreciate the game. Thanks guys for watching, and see you in the next one.